Welcome to the series where I test out the OSR's wiki money making guides. I started this series almost a year ago and since then we've tried out multiple methods even if they're a little silly such as picking bananas or even flax. If you enjoy these types of videos then feel free to check out the playlist that I've made for them and feel free to leave a suggestion down in the comments for a method that you'd like to see tested. With that being said, let's get into the video. So for today's money maker, we'll be taking a look at another Slayer monster, and that Slayer monster is Necreals, and these we will find in the Catacombs of Karend. So us killing them on task there in the Catacombs of Karend gives us a chance to get pieces of the Dark Totem, which can then be used to fight the Slayer boss Skatizo. Now in order to fight the Necreals, you do need a Slayer level of 80, and magic is probably the most used method of training here at Necreals. They're a really good source of not only Slayer XP, but also magic XP since you can burst them and use Barrage here as well. Alright, so for the gear setup, you want to prioritize either prayer bonus or damage boosting gear. So for my setup, I'm going for the damage boosting, which is why you see me with Ancestrals, uh, Tormented Bracelet, the Occult Necklace, and of course the Kodai Wand. Now if you want a much cheaper option that is also very effective, and probably will save you supplies in the long run, feel free to buy some vestment robes, they're a lot cheaper and they'll give you some nice prayer bonus. So there are some upgrades that I can bring that are better than what you see here, but I just don't have access to them. For instance, the ring slot, I'm bringing the ring of suffering because of the prayer bonus, but if I really wanted to maximize that, then a imbued ring of the gods would be better, but I currently don't own one because it's very, very expensive. So I don't think it's worth the extra 20 million just for another plus four bonus, but it's up to you. Now, if you were curious about what weapon to switch out for, uh, before I had the Kodai, I did use the Ancient Staff, which is a lot cheaper, so feel free to get that. And besides that, you should be good to go. The inventory setup is just, of course, the darts to aggro all of the monsters onto you. A rune pouch will help with death and blood runes for the Ice Barrage or Ice Burst. And a Xerix Talisman to teleport to the area. Now, as for getting to the area, if you're unfamiliar, simply teleport back to Xerix's heart with the talisman. Come over here to the statue and investigate it. And you will enter the catacombs of Grand. And then from here, you want to run north just a bit past these hill giants. And then run east past the Bloodvelds. And here is a spot for Necreals. You can either do them right here or you can move over to this, this next spot right here and also do them over here. And I gotta say, this is bringing back some serious nostalgia because it has been a long time since I've slain Necreals. But yeah, this is how to get here. Very easy place to get to. Now, as for the method, it is very straightforward. All you want to do is equip your darts, aggro each one of them until they're all attacking you, and then run to a corner of this area and run back and forth between two spaces until they all get stacked up on each other so that whenever you barrage them, you hit all of them at once. Now, when you do this, you're going to be getting a lot of magic XP and a lot of Slayer XP. And depending on which spell you decided to use, it'll affect how much XP you get here. Obviously, if you use barrage, you'll probably get more XP here, but it does cost a lot more. If money is a little tight, I definitely recommend using Burst instead of Barrage. And of course, having the Vestment Robes will help out since it's a lot cheaper than Ancestrals. And you'll also save money on Prayer Potions since your Prayer Bonus will be much higher. Now, Necreals do have a chance of spawning a superior Slayer monster, which is a Necrearch. And those can actually do quite a bit of damage. So whenever one of those spawns, you can either use Blood Burst or Blood Barrage to heal off of it, or you can run to the west, under the archway and save spot them from there. You might have noticed that the first superior that we killed, I just stayed in the same position, but I was taking plenty of damage. But thanks to Blood Barrage, we were able to heal up to full health with just one cast because of all of the monsters that were here. But I definitely recommend safe spotting since they can do quite a bit of damage. Now, normally you'll have to bank quite a bit because they do drop plenty of alchemicals, as you can see here. There are rune axes, rune boots, and a whole bunch of other rune items. And Thanks to the Explorer's Ring 4, we do have access to 30 High Alks per day. So I did take advantage of that, and we managed to stay here for the entire trip, which was very nice. So without the ring, you'll definitely have to be banking more often, and if you don't have the Max Cape, um, the place that I used to bank, like all those years ago, was I would just teleport back to Zarek's Heart, and run into the castle west of the teleport location, and then go upstairs and bank there. 
Now, not only is there a bank for you to bank all of your items and refill your supplies, but there is also an altar at the top, which you can use to restore your prayer. And if you don't have the Slayer level to kill these monsters, then there's actually a money maker where you can just pretty much hop worlds and find someone who is slaying them. And sometimes they won't pick up all of the loot. I mean, I didn't even pick up all the loot. I left plenty of stuff on the ground. And there has been known to be people that would just hop worlds to pick up all the loot that people leave behind and high alk it. So that could be a nice money maker as well. Now, like I said before, having access to the blood spells is nice to heal because even though you have protect from melee up, you do still take some damage from the spawns that appear, but these monsters do drop tuna and a lobster, I believe, which can be used to heal you up if you don't have access to the blood spells. You might want to also consider bringing bracelets of slaughter since these monsters are very popular because of their pretty chill training methods. Um, it's not too bad. It's pretty relaxed and you get massive amounts of magic and slayer XP. Also something that I noticed that was different this time around was that the Slayer helmet now properly tracks how many we've killed. So to the left of my inventory you'll notice a number, right now it's currently at 47, 45, 44. That is how many neck reels I have left on my Slayer task before, whenever I was here. They wouldn't really track properly, so after every like 50 kills or so, you would check your Slayer helmet manually to see how many you had left, and it turns out that you had killed like 20 that weren't even tracked on the thing. So yeah, it's nice to see that they've updated that. I think that's something within Runelight. But even though the Slayer helmet does track them correctly, the loot tracker is something else. I think because we're killing so many of these at the same time, it doesn't track all of the kills in the loot tracker, which is kind of unfortunate, but it's not a big deal. And that is pretty much it for our one task of neck reels. So we managed to finish our task of 250 neck reels and it just took us under 50 minutes. So very nice, a lot faster than I thought it would be. I think that's thanks to our damage boosting gear. Here's a look at all of the loot we got. I guess we could price check it, but there are some items that uh, are not gonna be in there just because they got thrown in with the rune pouch. There was a bunch of death, bloods, and soul runes that were thrown in there. So it helped us with the cost of the ice barrage, which we'll have to calculate later on. So as for the loot in my inventory, 852k along with a hard clue, a uh, lamp that we got that's not part of it, a dark totem, and then two pieces of another dark totem. And of course one ancient crystal as well. Now normally I would do the hard clue, but I'm saving all of my clues for master clues, so that's why I'm not going to do it throughout, throughout this video. I know I've mentioned it in the past before, but I thought I'd mention it again since some people are curious as to why I don't do them uh, in the videos, so that's why. So now we can go and head over to the GE and sell off all of our stuff and then calculate the total profit that we made in these 50 minutes. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and sell off all of our loot that we have now. Um, just a tip, you probably might not want to sell this off if you want some extra magic magic XP and maybe even a little bit of extra money. You can just high up all the rune stuff, but just to speed up the video, I'm going to go ahead and sell everything. This pains me to see. Chaos runes at 49 coins. Man, they are so cheap right now. It's a little ridiculous. Alright, there we go. So, after we've sold everything, the remaining cash stack that we have is 900,956. Now, like I said before, some of the items like death runes and blood runes are in there and I'm not sure how many I got because the loot tracker doesn't keep an exact number of how many neck reels you kill because if you kill multiple at the same time I think it tracks it just as one kill so in the loot tracker we only have 191 kills valued at 1.22 mil. Now we can go ahead and calculate the total profit we made here so if we take into account the cost of supplies which was 517,721 GP subtract that from the money we made which was 900,956 GP we get a grand total profit of 383,235 GP. Now, like I said earlier, you could probably make more money per hour if you choose to bring the vestment robes for the prayer bonus and if you choose to burst them instead of use barrage here. But it is important to note that even though we didn't make a huge amount of money, we got some massive XP gains. So in less than an hour, we were able to get 62,000 Slayer XP along with 184,000 Magic XP. And of course, some Hit Points XP as well. And if you were curious, we did manage to kill three superior Necriarchs here, as you can see. And the loot wasn't too crazy, but we do get those nice dark totem pieces. And just like in the last Slayer video we did on Cerberus, I also have a picture of the gear setup that I used back then. 
And as you can see, it wasn't really the proper gear setup. The Eternal Boots and the Sears Ring were completely unnecessary because we don't really need Magic Bonus. If anything, we need more Prayer Bonus in those slots, which is why I brought the Devout Boots and the Ring of Suffering in place this time. It's also cool to see what the Xerix Talisman used to look like. I just want to say thanks for checking out the video, and if you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a thumbs up and maybe even a subscription. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next episode.